We are continuing with um, absolute value functions. Okay, so we are now going to 3E. I would say solve for solve the following x squared minus 4x equal to 12. You can write it inside, but we don't care. We do the same thing. So we have x squared minus 4x equal to 12, or x squared minus 4x equal to negative 12. And then we solve the two equations. So they are quadratic. So this becomes like that. And we solve it. So what's the value of x? We look for factors. Have you, baby, have you seen my... Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for the music. So we move, we get the the factors. So the product is negative 12 and the sum is negative four. So we can use negative six and positive two. So we have x squared plus two x and a six x and a 12. So this is x plus two, another x plus two, meaning x plus two, x minus six. So we have two values there, x is equal to negative two and x is equal to six. It will satisfy that equation. Okay, then we also have another one, x squared minus four x plus 12 equal to zero. Two numbers. Here we can't find those numbers. So let's try to use the formula. X is equal to minus B. Over 2A. So if you substitute, you will have 4 plus or minus. 4 squared is 16 minus 4 times 12. Now uh, that's 48. over two. So you see, inside uh, it's less than zero, so you can't get solutions out of that. So it means that we only have x equal to minus two and x equal to six, simply because we don't know the root of a negative number there. So in case you are confused there, at what is this number number? So what we are having is four plus or minus root negative 32 over two. We don't know the root of a negative number. It's complex and here we're dealing with real numbers. All these functions are in the set of real numbers. Nothing complex. So this is how you also solve f. So you create it negative two and you create it positive two and then you solve the quadratic. So that we can go straight to question four. We do the redefinition of the absolute value function in two pieces. Okay, redefining absolute value functions. Mm -hmm. 
We'll go to question 4A. So we have the function f of x equal to x minus 6 plus x plus 1. Absolute. So let's be attentive here. The first step that we do is we get x minus 6 and write it as piecewise. We keep x minus 6, comma, x minus 6 greater or equal to 0, or negative x minus 6, comma, x minus 6 less than 0. We don't change the inequality part. We change the sign of the down, which is negative, x minus 6, without affecting the inequality. We've only changed it from being greater to less. Whenever we're talking about greater, we always put greater or equal to. But less, we just say less. Then we can work out this. It is x minus 6 when x is greater or equal to 6 or it's negative x plus 6 when x is less than 6. We are done with that piece. Then we get x. We get x plus 1 and do the same. x plus 1 when x plus 1 is greater or equal to 0 minus x plus 1 when x plus 1 is less than 0. Meaning, this guy is x plus 1 when x is greater or equal to negative 1, and minus x minus 1 when x is less than negative 1. So now we are done with defining the pieces. We want to talk about this and this. We draw a table. How many values do we have? We have negative one and six, two values. And you always have two values if I have two pieces. We have three pieces, I have three values. So we have negative one. We also have positive six. Now we know that in this interval, x has less than one. In the middle interval, we should have negative one less or equal to x, which is less than six. So see, whenever x is greater, we put the equal to. And then in the other interval, x is greater or equal to six. So we have three intervals here. So I'll break the intervals used on those numbers like that. Like that. Okay. And then now I bring the pieces. The absolute of x minus six. The absolute of x plus one. The last piece is f of x. Like that. Okay. So what are we doing? We're going to check now what the definition of the absolute of x minus 6 is when x is less than negative 1. So when I go to x minus 6, I'll find greater than six or less than six. The question is, is negative one greater than six or less than six? 
Negative one is less than six. So I will get negative x plus six. I'll get this one, the one which has less because I'm dealing with negative one that is less than six. I move to the middle in term. The same absolute value of x minus six. When x is between negative one and six, is x bigger than six or still less than six? So x is still less than six. So I'll put the same definition. When x is greater or equal to six, I now use the upper one, x minus six. So I'm done with the absolute of x minus six. I got the absolute of x plus one. When x is less than negative one, what is it? It's down here. It's minus x minus one. What about when x is greater or equal to negative one? When x is greater or equal to negative one, it's x plus one. So if x is bigger than six, obviously it's bigger than negative one. So it remains x plus one. Can I come and check here? Do I have plus or minus? We have a plus here, so we add. So we're adding negative x plus negative x. We get minus two x. Positive six plus negative one. We get positive five. We're still adding negative x plus x. That is zero. Six plus one, that's seven. We're adding x plus x, that's 2x. Negative 6 plus 1, that's negative 5. Oh, wonderful. Now that we have found f of x, can you write it as a piecewise function? We try. So we're saying f of x is now equal to, the first piece is negative 2x plus 5. For which interval for x less than negative one? This one. The second one is seven. What interval negative one less or equal to x less than six? The other one, two x minus five. When x is greater or equal to six. So we have written that the piecewise function. Can we sketch it? Even easy. We can now sketch it. Okay, so when x is negative one, we substitute negative one in this function up here. So we have f of negative one, equal to 2 plus 5, which is 7. So I'm putting it where there's 7. So I'll open because it's not included. And if I check my the coefficient of x, that's negative. So the function is going up because of the slope. And then when x is negative 1, we are getting 7. So we come and close now all the way up to positive six. We open, so we draw a straight line here because it remains seven throughout. When we get there, we have two X minus five. Two X minus five. When you put six there, that is 12 minus five, which is seven. So we come and close it. And then, the coefficient is now positive, so it's going up. That's how you draw that function.
So the graphing, you are substituting all those two numbers, negative one and six, in each piece where they belong. The first negative one, we substitute in negative two x plus five. It gave us seven. And so we had initially opened because negative one was only put it there. That's why it was initially open. And then negative gradient, the line comes down. And then the seven is a straight line. You have a constant function there for any value of x between negative one up to six. So we maintain that seven. And then pick six, put in a function, it gave us seven, so we include, and then above throughout. So you need to practice. So you do one more uh, for using this very example. It should be enough for your understanding. But the only thing that I can caution you is that you practice to make sure that at least you are fast on such questions. Because if you attempt this question, you need to be fast because it can take a lot of your time. So it demands for a bit of some speed there. When answering. Okay. Next, we'll go to question five. Here now we are dealing with absolute inequalities. 2x minus 3 is greater than 7. So when it's greater, you will define like this. Or less than negative 7. When it's greater, when the absolute is greater, that's how you redefine. So you have a piece less than negative seven or bigger than seven. So you solve the two inequalities separately. So this will be two x greater than 10, meaning x is greater than five. And the other side, two x less than negative four. So x is less than negative two. And then you get the union. So the solution set is going to be um, negative infinite to negative two union five to infinite. You get the union of this interval and this one. So you get the union of the two intervals. Okay, what about E? E is the absolute of 3x less or equal to 2 minus x. So when it's less or equal to, you redefine as negative of that less or equal to 3x, less or equal to 2 minus x. So you do that. So you can separate the two. So we'll have minus, as I'm expanding it, two plus x, less or equal to three x, and three x, less or equal to two minus x. So this is going to be x minus three x, less or equal to two meaning minus 2x less or equal to 2. If I divide by minus, I'll get x greater or equal to negative 1. 
the other side, it will be 3x plus x, s is equal to 2, which is 4x, less or equal to 2, so x less or equal to half. Okay, so what's the solution set here? Here we get the intersection. So we have negative one to infinite intersection, negative infinity to half. So we get the intersection, which will be negative one to half. At least you know how to get the intersection of intervals. So those are two intervals, then you get the intersection. Mm, sir. Hello. Why did we why did we get the union on the first question? And on the second one, why did we get the intersection? So on the first one, we had this. But it's either 2x minus 3 is bigger than 7 or 2x minus 3 is less than negative 7. The other one is saying negative, the negative of 2x minus x is less than 3x. And that very 3x is also less than 2 minus x. So it's in between. Now look at D. I mean, look at C. C is saying 4x plus 15 less than negative 2. The absolute can never be a negative number. And so it can never be less, uh, less than a negative number. So the solution set will then be empty. Very nice, isn't it? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Question six. Question six A. X plus two is greater than twelve over X plus three. Under inequalities, you do not cross multiply a variable because you don't know its sign. So what we do is we move we write like that. This is over one. So we have x plus three. And so we get x plus two multiplied by x plus three minus 12. And then expand that like that. And then this will be x squared plus 5x minus 6 over x plus 3. So 
So then we equate the numerator zero, the denominator zero. The denominator will give us x plus three equal to zero, meaning x is minus three. The numerator x squared um, that will be minus x plus six x minus six equal to zero. So it will be that, meaning x is one or x is minus six. So we get that in this, so we have three variables, we have three values. And then we draw a number line or you draw a table, any that you like. So I'll go for the number line where I'll put minus six, I'll put minus three, I'll put positive one. And then pick any number from those intervals. So I want to pick zero and substitute it in here. So when I put zeros there, I'll get negative six over three. You see, which is negative. So I'll put a negative meaning, I have a positive, positive, a negative. Then I check my inequality, what do I want? Greater than zero, meaning positive. So the solution set would be negative six to negative three, union one to infinity. So remember, if the inequality is greater or equal to, I include the numerator values. If it's less or equal to, I include the numerator values. But if it's just greater or just less, I don't include the n. Okay, we, we can end here for the night. We'll finish up tomorrow. We have a bit of some questions to do there from six. Maybe we can do one more or two, seven, eight, and then nine. Then we'll be done. So the quiz is coming from only one to sheet. So there's no need to panic. If you can go through what we've done, then you're almost ready. And you guys that read you are busy. That's why is you better study when there's need to use that knowledge. So now you can study because you are writing on test. See, the things you said last week, you can't remember them now. Tomorrow. Huh? Tomorrow is what? Tomorrow is Wednesday and the test is on test. The quiz on test. Oh, okay. <laughs> there is not even the questions that are remaining are not even long. They are simple questions like how to sketch the fractions. You just need the vertical symptom and horizontal and then pick the axis sketch. Then in the other question, the last question is, the question that you already did, we sketched polynomials already. Now we're just looking at what's the effect of the absolute value. If it means positive, then you flip the negative part, you push it up, that's all. So there, I won't even do much. And question six is already done. So just mean it's question seven, eight, nine, just like nothing to be done. Nine already did nine, it's just one comment. Good and all good day. Good day. Good night. <laughs> uh.
Ah, okay. Okay, let's finish then. If we don't, if we didn't go on there tomorrow, then let's finish. If you're not dead. I can finish. I'm just thinking that you're dead. Finish. You're feeling sleep, right? I can finish. No, you can finish. We can finish. Yes, sir. Yes. I can't hear what you guys are talking about. Let me finish this. But we can finish. Yes. Huh? Oh, what a word. Okay. I think we have we can finish, we can finish. Okay, yeah. Let's finish that tomorrow, no class. Yeah, right. So let's finish this. We we join this one, we cut it, then we join. We come and wind up. Okay, quickly, we are joining, eh?